Six days ago, I had a miscarriage. Never saw that coming. Never thought it would happen to me. But now I'm back to work. Mm. Um, last Monday, I had a surgery. It's called DNC to have my baby removed from my womb. The baby I thought I would raise. And now I'm back to work. Hello teachers, hello to my viewers, um, I'm making this video because I just wanted to honor the memory of my, of my baby. I really thought about it if I would make a video because everything's still fresh, you know, but I just want to make a video to honor the baby I never had. I really thought about it if I'm gonna keep this from people if I'm not gonna share my problems because you know as a professional you should never share your problems but again I just please allow me to honor the memory of my baby okay just let this video pass and let me just share my thoughts to the world because my channel is all about sharing what I know and feel to the world. Hello guys, you're watching this video because this is something I created not only to honor the memory of my baby, but also to share with you, to those of you who are going through the same thing that I'm going through right now, that you're not alone and that, you know, when when life throws something at you, something that you could, couldn't really handle, you just don't have a choice but to deal with it. You just don't have a choice but to face it, to move on, move forward, and do your best to make sure that it doesn't drive you crazy. And, you know, in my three months of YouTubing, I realized the importance of my platform, that there are several lives that I get to touch, um, people I get to inspire through the things that I share, my stories, you know, um, and I just think that the world has to know about my baby, you know. Um, just to share with you, I never wanted to have children. I've been married for five years, and my husband and I, we, d we didn't see ourselves as people who would be having children. We're kind of neutral about it, you know, but we don't, we don't hate having children, but we don't really, you know, like, like, uh, like having children. So we're kind of neutral. Um, whatever God gives us, you know, so be it. Um, then last February 19, I, I found out that I was pregnant. And you know what I felt? I just felt unimaginable, immeasurable joy. You know, um, that moment I saw the, the, the positive sign on, on the pregnancy test. I was like, oh, wow, I was able to create life inside of me. I'm a mom. And I was like, you know, through the years that I never saw myself being a mom and, you know, saying to myself, I don't want to be a mom. It's so difficult. I just want to care about myself, my husband and my pets, you know. The, the moment that I saw the, the two positive lines, I mean, the two lines on the pregnancy test saying that I was pregnant, I was like, oh, Wow, it feels great to be a mom. You know, I never I never saw myself being happy, you know, when I found out I was pregnant because I didn't want children. But it was a, a life-changing moment for me uh, when I found out I was pregnant. I was just so happy. So the first thing I did was I browsed through uh, all the obigainis in, in St. Luke's and um, I looked for this perfect obigaini and I was like, ah. This is going to be that woman who will be helping me give birth to this awesome baby inside of me. Had myself checked up 
had a pap smear, the very first pap smear I've had in my life. And it was so scary, by the way. And then after my pap smear, um, I started bleeding. Um, I don't know. I started bleeding. And I was like, okay, Google, what's happening to me? And then Google said it's normal to to have like bleeding, light bleeding or spotting after a pap smear when you're pregnant. And I also told my OB about it. And she said, oh, it's okay. There's nothing to worry about. It's normal. Just make sure you rest. Uh, don't carry heavy things. You know, uh, don't stress yourself too much. And then the bleeding stopped. Uh, stopped for a few days. Then here we go again. After a week, I started bleeding. And the bleeding was kind of weird. Uh, it was brown. It was a lot. And I was like so stressed already. So I had my OB checked. Um, I mean, I had myself checked by my OB. And then uh, the OB said that I had a 50-50% chance of uh, having a miscarriage. So 50-50. Uh, so the, the hope of, of um, you know, not having a miscarriage kept me going on, kept me strong, kept me from, you know, um, kept me from going crazy. I mean, prevented me um, from being crazy. And last March 19, I had I had an ultrasound, a transvaginal ultrasound. Didn't find a heartbeat. There was a baby. The baby wasn't growing. Um, the baby was supposed to be seven weeks old, but the size of the baby was like six weeks, six weeks and two days. So I kind of know the exact date as to when my baby died based on that, you know, diagnostics. It was a day when I peed as usual, and I also peed blood, a blood clot. And I know it's quite gross, but what I did was with my bare hands, I got the blood clot from the toilet. I analyzed it and I just started crying. But still, I'm, I was being hopeful that maybe even though there's a 50% chance that I have a miscarriage, maybe I'm the other 50 that has, you know, good, the, the other, the good side of the 50-50, I mean, you know, the side where a miracle happens and my baby lives. But then again, this baby wasn't for me. So, March 19th, no heartbeat, the ob said. It's an early embryonic demise, which means my baby is dead. So, um, three days after having my minor surgery to have my baby removed from my womb, I'm back in Arkansas because work does work. Mm, and I know that I'm fit to work. Life goes on. I need money. I need work. I lost my job because of the pandemic, so I have to be strong. And where do I get strength from? Of course, I get strength from God. I get strength from the baby I never had. I get strength from my husband. And when you are faced with difficult situations like this, where you don't know what to do anymore, you just want to give up, I always say this, even to my students, the people I mentor, always think of your why. Why do you do the things that you do? Why do you work so hard? Why do you choose to go to work even though you don't feel like it? Why? What is your why? And your why will keep you strong. Your why will keep you motivated. Your why will push you to be the best version of yourself, even though you don't feel like it. When you're feeling hell, when you're feeling as if you're inside a nightmare that never ends, your why will keep you strong. So to those of you who are having a, a difficult time um, because of your personal problems and you still have to work, know that you're not alone. There's a lot of us in this world, you know, a lot of us who are suffering, but still need to go to work. And, um, um, just be strong. Time heals all wounds. And uh, if you have a wound that can't be healed by time, just like mine, just like a death of a loved one, I know that we're going to learn to live with it, to live with the loss, live with the problem. You just have to think of your why. So now I'm back to work.
it feels weird to be back to work without a baby inside of me, without having to worry about a baby, without having to take my medication, without having to eat healthy. <laughs> But it is what it is, life. So teachers, always remember that life always has ups and downs. There will be times that you're going to feel that How come I'm just always down, right? I'm always at the bottom. I'm always at a loss. It really happens. Things happen for a reason. It's not because God hates you or the universe hates you. It's just that these things happen and you always have to, you know, have a reason why you do the things that you do because these are the things that will keep you going. And Um, what I can say is, you know, uh, I've really had a tough year ever since I started working in Akatsak. Uh, that was a sign that I've been having a tough year. You know, um, I lost my job because of the pandemic and there were lots of deaths in the family too. a death of two of my grandparents, a death of my father-in-law and now the death of my baby. And these things happen and we don't have any control over it. Uh, what I can say is, you know. Um, when you are faced with these challenges, number one, learn how to separate your personal life from your professional life as much as you can be a professional. Work is work. You have to, you know, separate your problems from work, like completely. Don't let it affect how you do things or don't let it affect how you treat people, how you treat your students uh, when, you know, you're an online English teacher. Um, and I'm going to, you know, show you a video of this class that I've had where I was totally suffering. My, my pain scale was a nine, oh no, was an eight over 10. It means I was really, really, really in pain physically because of the miscarriage. But then again, I have a class, I can't cancel it anymore. So I did my best to conceal the pain and still go through the class. I'm fine, thank you. Mm, great. Well, great. I'm also, well, I'm also okay. okay. And for our lesson today, for our lesson today We're going to learn We're about going trial, to learn lesson about trial three. lesson three. I ride a I horse. ride a horse. I ride a horse. I ride a horse. And can you tell me can what you tell is your hobby? What's your hobby? Nishi Huan Shama I Nishi Huan Shama I What's your hobby? What's your hobby? Listen to music. Ah, you like listening ah, you to like music. Ah, you like listening to music. Well, you could say. Well, you could say. My hobby. My hobby. Is listening. Is listening. To music. To music. Could you say that? Could you say that? Um, my second tip is know your priorities. Your priority would be your health, your your family. At the end of the day, money is just money. Um, you're gonna earn it eventually, but the things that you will lose in yourself, your health, or your family, those cannot be replaced anymore. So know your priorities. You know, I took a leave from work. I canceled 80% of my classes because I know that I had to prioritize myself and back then my unborn child. And now I have to prioritize my recovery. So I only work four hours instead of 10 hours or eight hours every day. Know your priorities. And of course, my, my, my final tip to those of you going through hell right now is to pray. You know, um, I'm not forcing you to believe in God, but if you do have a God, pray. Because there is peace in him. Mm, he will help you understand the things that you can't understand. He'll give you strength, opportunities to be strong and courageous. He's going to give you opportunities to feel loved. So don't forget to pray. And again, mm, If you really want to be able to cope, don't dwell on your problems. Focus on work. Deviate your attention. Do something productive. You know, do what I do. Let's say, share what you know to the world. Inspire others. Um, create helpful videos. Or just, you know, do the things that you do with inspiration. That even though you have lost something or someone, use that loss to make you feel, or no, Use that loss to make you better, not only to, you know, make you feel better because the feeling better is work in progress, but use it to make you do the things you do really well. Use it as an inspiration 
to help you move forward, to help you move on. And before I end this video, I want to thank you all for listening to me. I'm also going to share a, a video of, of, of my very first class um, coming back to work. And thank you so much for listening. I don't need you to give this video um, a thumbs up. There's nothing good about this video. Um, I don't need you to subscribe to my channel. I'm not using this video to get subscriptions. You can comment down below if you have questions. Mm, any thoughts about this? But again, I'm not posting this videos. This video rather for the views or the likes. I just want to honor the memory of my baby. And thank you so much for listening. You guys have been amazing. Thank you for always listening to me. You have a great day. And may you be happy or not. May you be in your life's up or downs. Please continue to be a blessing to the people around you because that's what truly matters.